is a form of promotion. Uh, the man of God said, not only am I being promoted, amen, what you see in the natural is also going to be revealed in the spirit. And so whatever you see going on in the natural, you got to realize that the same thing is going on in the spirit. Sometime when you're facing new warfare, it is because you're being promoted. Yeah. Uh, don't get discouraged. Don't get downcast. But don't be afraid. And so when we began to hear him preach this message, which he did a tremendous job, and people were shouting and, and giving God praise and giving God glory and dancing and running all around, we were so excited about the mere fact that we are being promoted. I mean, folk were moving the chairs and lifting their hands and praising God. And it was so wonderful. I, our hearts were encouraged and engaged, amen, in all that was being said and done. And when we mention promotion, it is an exciting moment. It is something to rejoice and dance about. Uh, but but I, I want to talk today as I, as I began to think about, amen, that message, and I began to labor in thought concerning that message, I began to say to myself, amen, as I look across the congregation, as I look across the church, amen, uh, 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 kingdom, I, I realize that a lot of folk get happy when they hear about promotion. But I want to drop a little tidbit in here today to say that promotion is at hand, but do you want it? Promotion is at hand, but do you want it? It is amazing that when we are being promoted, we fail to understand that new height, new fight. Uh, did you hear what I said? When you are being promoted, you have to understand and catch the revelation as to the fact that when you're meet, reaching new heights, we know that there's spiritual warfare where? In high places. And you've got to realize that with every, with every promotion, there is a new battle that is beginning to be formed to stop you. Uh, when I look up this word promotion, amen, it comes to say, activities that support or provide active, active encouragement. Let me read that again because you might not have heard what I said. Activity that supports or provides active encouragement for the furtherance of a cause. So when you get promoted, it's not for us to back down and do less. You know, sometimes when people are promoted, they think that that means now I don't have to do the things I used to do. But we sometimes fail to understand it was your encouragement, it was your hands-on, it was your participation that got you to the point of elevation. And it's sad to see so many get elevated and then sit back and say, well, I have now got what I want. But let me tell you something. The Bible says many are called, but few are chosen. And Matthew, that's what God speaks through Matthew in Matthew 22 and 14. He says, for many are called. God has called each and every one of us. And it's not based on your educational level. It's not based on how long you've been in church. It is based on the fact that he has called each and every one of us. Yes. But what is so fearful is that, but few are what? Chosen. As if God is being partial. God is not being partial in his selection. What it is is that most folk understand, if I come into Christ, there's a price to be paid. Yes. Anybody catch what I just said? So many don't get chosen because many don't want to be called. Haven't you heard people say, I, I knew the Lord was calling me, but I was running. As if God going to chase you down. God don't need us 
He likes to include us. Because whenever we start thinking that God needs us, he'll raise up a jackass. Come on, somebody. He'll raise up somebody whom you think don't qualify to do what you do, and they'll end up doing it better than you because it's not by might nor by power, but it's by his spirit. Oh, I wish I could get a praise in the house. So God likes to include all of us. He's calling all of us. He's calling us out of darkness. He's calling us into his marvelous light. And sometimes we think it's more fun out there. But most young people get to understand, even as Ivy is starting to learn, that once you get out of the house and get into the real world, it's a whole new ball game. And so he said, I'm calling them all. But too many of them are looking at the price. Luke chapter 12, verse 48. The Bible says, But he that know not and did commit such things worthy of stripes shall be beaten with few stripes. For unto whosoever much is what? Yeah. To what? Yeah. Much is what? Yeah. Amen. God is saying, I want to promote my people. But they don't want to give me them. Because to give me them means they have to deny themselves. To give me them means that I can't do it the way I want to do it. I become the property. I look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, have you become the property of God yet? Dude, dude, is he, are you really, listen, are you really the property of God? Because see, when you really become the property of God, you'll say like Paul has said, the life which I now live, I live by the faith of the Son of God. And it's no longer I, but Christ that, oh Lord have mercy, is Christ why? Because I no longer belong to me. How he thinks, how he do. I want to pattern because he talks to me. That's what he says. To whom much is given, much is required. Ask your neighbor, neighbor, have you counted up the cost yet? You love church. You love church so much that you sit in church and don't do nothing. You just come and fulfill your quota. You don't get in that participation. You sit in the pew and you might throw up a hand at the pastor. And that's as far as your commitment goes. The reason is because you still haven't become the property of God. Because God did not call us to just sit in a pew. God called us to become participants to further and to encourage. Didn't we, we not read about what promotion means? Yeah. Look at your name as a neighbor. Yeah. God's trying to promote you to become an instrument of encouragement. Of encouragement. Look what he says. Have you, have you counted up the call? How many of you know that somebody's waiting for your praise? Somebody is waiting for you to make a difference. God got some people, now listen to me carefully. God got some people who are waiting for you to get in place so you can bring them in. Oh, I know you don't like it. See, to who much is given, much is required. Because somebody is watching you. Yes. Look at your name and say, somebody watching you. When you think, you know these guys that's, you know, back in the day, listen to me carefully, back in the day, you can go out here and fool around, amen, and hide from everybody. But let me tell you something. Today they got cell phone cameras. Amen. You got to be mighty slick to keep ducking now. You got to be a smooth operator. Come on, why? Because everybody got a camera. Amen. The networks are out here. You don't know who got you on tape. 
I wish I could talk to somebody. Amen. Why are you slipping and diving, jumping and jiving? Come on, somebody. Somebody is watching you. Went down to Florida. Got all the way down there. And when I looked up, one of the brothers from the fellowshipping church came up to me and said, Hey, apostle. I said, Praise the Lord. Good God Almighty. And guess what I told him? I said, Good thing we living right. That's the first thing that came out of my mouth. Good thing we're living right. Because you don't know who you're going to bump into. And see, I'm, I'm not ashamed. Of, I wish I could get a group that said I'm not ashamed. I'm not ashamed of the gospel because I'm not just in church on Sunday. I'm in church Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and come back around and Sunday's here because why? Church ain't just on Sunday. Not when you are the property of God. Go in the military. They tell you right off the bat, you have now become the property of the United States of America. They issue your clothes. They tell you how to look. Uh, yeah, come on, somebody. What they're doing, they're telling you, you don't think for yourself. You do what we say. I wish I could get some help in here. Why? Because when you become the property of someone, they can dictate to you what you should do. I'm so glad I got a Bible that can tell me what I should do. And whenever I step out of line, the Holy Ghost will come and say something because I'm the property. I wish I could get a praise here. That I am the property of the Holy Ghost. He will lead you. He will guide you. You don't need nobody investigating you. If you got the spirit of God. To whom much is given. How many times you wanted to give up? How many times you wanted to just throw in the towel? How many times you said you're tired of this mess? How many times you, wish you could just say, listen, the heck with it. I'm going to do my own thing. But the Holy Ghost. He's the restrainer. Has he ever had to restrain you? Huh? I wish I could get some help in here. I know there's several times he's got to restrain me. Sometimes he even got to put his hands on my mouth. I wish I could talk to somebody. Huh? See, y'all don't like to be honest. I like to be honest. Huh? I'm kept by the power of a living Christ because if I had it my way, it'll be the highway. Oh, I wish I could talk to somebody. Look at your neighbors. I'm glad he ain't talking about you. First Kings. First Kings 19. First Kings 19 and 19. We're talking about the cause. It's, we're talking about when promotion comes, do you really want it? I want to just drop a little joke in here. Is it all right? Jesus comes into a restaurant. There was a man who was crippled. And when Jesus walked by, he touched the man. Man got healed. Stood up and started praising God. Walked by a lady that was sitting at the counter. She had a withered hand. Jesus came by, touched the woman, and the hand was made new like as the other. He walked down a little bit further. Man had back brace on. Knees messed up. And Jesus was getting ready to touch him. He said, wait a minute, Jesus. Don't touch me. My disability just went through. <laughs> Don't you touch me. <laughs> Why did not the man want to be touched? Because he counted up the cause that if I get healed, I can't get no money. And we got people who will sit in church and don't want to be lifted up because people feed into their pity 
And so they never become whole because if they become whole, they might not get no attention. Y'all going to talk to me after a while. Going to talk to me after a while. I'm talking about promotion. We got to be willing to let God heal us. We got to be willing to let God deliver us. We got to be willing to let God raise us up. We got to be willing to let God make a difference in our lives. Because somebody is trapped and they need to see somebody come out. And when they see somebody come out like you, they'll have a desire to come out too. Promotion. Promotion. Do you want it? First Kings 19, 19, the Bible says, so he departed thence, talking about Elijah, and he found Elisha, the son of Shaphat, who was plowing with 12 yokes of oxen before him. And with the 12, and Elijah passed by him, and he cast his mantle upon him. That mantle represents succession. Elijah was getting ready to step off the scene, but God told him to th go and talk to Elisha. And he threw his mantle upon him. Immediately, we see that he wasn't a lazy individual. You can't be lazy and expect God to do it everything. I don't know about you, but when I came to Christ, I was a basket case. Anybody was a basketball player too? Huh? Bouncing all around, bouncing from pillar to post, lost in direction, don't know what to do. Huh? Alcohol, drugs, name it, we was in it. But then all of a sudden, God comes and throws his mantle of grace on our lives and says, I'm not concerned about your past. Because I got a future for you. Right there, that was your first promotion. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? There's promotion that's still in your, coming in your life. But you got to be willing to let go of what you're familiar with. You got to let go of some old friends. You got to let go of some old behaviors. And let God take you into the realm of your promotion. So you can be blessed like never before. Listen to this. Listen to this. Twelve yoke of oxen. He said, let me, I pray thee. Listen to, listen to the response now. He said, and he left the oxen and ran after Elisha. He knew what that mantle meant. He knew that God was now dealing with him. But look at what it says. He ran after him. He said, let me, I pray thee, kiss my father and my mother, and then I will follow you. Listen to what the response is. And he said, go back again. For what do I have to do with you? What do I have to do with you? Look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, neighbor. your promotion your don't come from the preacher. So stop trying to be a preacher pleaser. Be faithful unto God, and the preacher will recognize it, but be faithful to God. He said, what do I have to do with you? Now, what did he, why did he want to go back home? Yeah, he wanted to let them know he was getting ready to go with the prophet, but there's two things that I want to point out here. What is that? He had to give up some money. For he was going to receive the inheritance of his family. How many know that ain't nothing that's so easy to just walk away from? Well, I wish I could get somebody to talk to me. Sometimes your money got you more than you got money. I wish I could talk to somebody. That's why sometimes you can't give up stuff because you, you're in love with money. You might not think you're in love with money, but you are in love with money. That's why you can't give liberally because money tells you you better not give it because I belong to you. And you belong to me. Come on, somebody. So he was getting ready to walk away from 
an inheritance. How can you do that? Except you got an unction from God. Yeah. Number two, he was getting ready to walk away from those in whom he loved. Sometimes when it comes to walking with God, you got to get up folk that ain't going where you going. Uh-oh. 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 Because sometimes we're so attached to our families that they stop us from doing what God wants us to do because you love them more than the call that's on your life. Ooh, that didn't go over well, Lord. Listen to this. Listen to this. So the Bible says, and he returned back, took the ox, slew them, and he boiled them and had a feast with his family, and then he rose up, and he went what? After Elijah. And did what? Ministered unto him. You mean to tell me, here's the third thing. You mean to tell me I gave up all that to come and wash your hands? Wait a minute, did you hear what I just said? See the cost of humility? You, you're getting ready to inherit land and oxen and all these things. Huh? You're getting ready to get all this stuff. And now you leave that and they give you a job to wash a man's hands. Some of y'all would flip out. Don't you, know I got a, don't you know I got a master's degree? Where's she at? I got a master's degree. Hmm? I got a master's degree. I'm not, not me. I'm just talking in general. Because some of y'all, ooh, he got a master's degree. No, I'm talking in general. You mean to tell me she's got a master's degree? You got a master's degree, don't you? My son-in-law got a master's degree. And guess what his job is? Help keep the refreshers, the, 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 the air, air fresheners. I had to give him a backup. Now he got a backup with brother... Uh, Brother Glover, he got a backup now. You mean to tell me the pastor going to give you a job to replace air fresheners and you got a master's degree? Some of y'all, I gave you a job like that. You been left the church and got you another job, another church with a master's degree. This man had all of this going for him and he ends up washing the man of God's hands. But look at somebody next to Look at somebody next to you and say, every facet of ministry is sacred to God. Come on, look at somebody else you ain't talked to and just tell them, every facet of ministry is sacred to God. Look at somebody else and say, don't you try to make it small because it's great in God's eyes. Don't you try to make anything in the kingdom of God small because it's great to God. Yeah. It is so great. Listen, listen to this. It, Elisha, he, he, he took that job like he was standing in front of God doing his job. Why do you say that, preacher? Because time rolls on, amen, and uh, 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 what's his name? Uh, 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 Naaman was, uh, took on an illness, and a woman who was enslaved by the enemy looked at her master and said, there is a man. Yeah. Look at your neighbor and say, every job I do for God from now on is going to be precious to me. If I'm singing in the choir, ain't nobody got to tell me I got to practice. If I'm on the minister's board, ain't nobody got to tell me to study. If I'm on the prayer group, ain't nobody got to tell me to pray. Why? Because I understand that every facet of this thing is sacred to God. I'm talking about promotion. Do you, do you really want it? Huh? Listen to this. This woman was in slavery, but she remembered a man and said, I know a man. That when he speaks, things happen. And guess what she remembered about that man? He is the man that washed the hands of Elijah. Whew. You'll catch that 3 o'clock in the morning. Every facet of ministry is sacred to God. 
I don't care if you got a, your job is to sweep one corner of the church. Sweep it like Michelangelo carved paintings. Don't make it look like it don't mean nothing. Amen. Just because nobody don't see you and you looking at that paper and you just walk on by it. You don't know that God might have set that paper there to see if you still humble enough to bend down and pick that paper up. That paper could be your promotion. Are you hearing the Holy Ghost yet? Huh? Are you hearing him yet? Huh? David did not know that, amen, when his father said, I want you to go and take this meal to your brothers, he had no idea that he was going to be promoted to be the next king. What is God trying to get you to do? What is God trying to say to us today? I want to promote you, but do you really want it? Let me go to another scripture. This task is difficult. It's very hard. Why? Because Matthew 16, verse 24, tells us to do something that's nearly impossible. You ready to hear what he said? Then Jesus said unto his disciples, If any man come after me, if any man come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross. Somebody say, your cross, your own personal cross. Stop trying to carry somebody else's cross. Stop trying to correct everybody's problem. Carry your own cross. Listen to what he says now. And do what? Follow me. Follow my example. Follow what I tell you. Do what I ask you. Listen to this. For whosoever shall save his life shall lose it. And whosoever shall lose his life, what? For my sake. Look at somebody say, if you give it up to God, you're going to end up with more than you had. Come on, tell somebody, if you give it up now, you'll have more than what you had. I know it looked like you got a lot. But if you give it up to God, you'll have more than what you got. Come on, give him praise if you got me. It's word good to me. I want a copy. Please let me have a tape. Listen to this. He said, listen, 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 listen. Stop trying to, stop trying to make your life and just obey God. Because when you do what God tells you to do, I told, I tell this to young men all the time. It applies to you women. It applies to anybody. But I, I, I often tell it to men because men have a greater struggle. See, women are intimate. They're emotional beings. Sometimes you have a greater contact with God than us men. And the reason is because you are driven by emotions. God puts some emotions in you. Men, we look for facts and figures. We are visual. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Amen. And so God will sometimes deal with you in a different level then he deals with us men. But I want to say something to you. God says, listen to me now. I told this young man, and I tell men all the time, some men are not meant to be happy. Amen. Let me say it again. Some men are not meant to be happy. Is anybody listening to me? Amen. They're not meant to be happy. But they're meant to be great. Amen. Anybody catch what I just said? Amen. See, because when you run after trying to be happy, you'll miss your destiny. Amen. You'll miss your calling. Because happiness is not on God's top priority. Amen. What's on God's top priority is his assignment. Yes. His assignment is more important than you being happy. And it took God to give me that revelation. That's why I can eat a lot of stuff because I'm not trying to be happy. I'm trying to fulfill an assignment. Because if happiness was on the top of my agenda, I would make other decisions. But I understand if I start trying to live the way I think, I wish I could talk to somebody. Can you look at somebody and say, how many decisions you made trying to be happy and it turned up wrong? 
You thought you had the right man. It turned out wrong. You thought you had the right woman. It turned out wrong. You thought you had the right job. It turned out wrong. Everything we try to pick to make happy. I wish I could get a praise in this building. Let him deny himself. And I said that this is a difficult task. Why is it difficult? Because it's hard to deny yourself. You can, you can deny people. You can deny a whole lot of stuff. But when it comes to you denying yourself, well, I'm going to stay in this relationship because God said do it. Self say, you need to get out of this. But your assignment says, I need you to be an example. I need you to grit your teeth, put your head down, and run for your life, and trust me. Oh, I wish I could talk to somebody. Huh? Huh? See, a lot of times, because we run after happiness, it leads us into roads that we have no business going down. Young girls give their bodies to these young boys. The boy ain't, don't know what he's doing. All he knows is going to shoot out something when he gets excited, and you can end up having a baby and don't know nothing about love. Uh-oh, tiny and close the ears. You might well talk about it. They're doing it. Come on now. You're trying to be all squeamish. They know more about it than you. They, they get ready to write a book for you to help you out. Yeah, I said it. I said it, I said it. Deny, deny. You got to deny this flesh. This flesh is crazy. Look at, your, look at your hands and say, this flesh is crazy. If God don't control it, it'll get out of control. One of my kids called me and said, Daddy, I used to couldn't stand you and Mama the way y'all were raising us. She's, they said, but you know what? I'm so glad y'all raised us the way we've been raised because no telling what I would be doing out here today. Because we live in a crazy world and flesh is having its way. To, to deny yourself in 2019 in this sexual revol revol revolution? Huh? You talking about you going to try to put a lockdown? That's a task that's impossible without the power of the Holy Ghost. It's impossible. Let me say it again. It is impossible. Because this flesh is unruly. What, 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 Papa? I, 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 I just kissed him. Once that saliva slide down your throat. The Bible says it's better for a man. Listen to me, young man. Listen to me, young ladies. The Bible says it's better for a man not to touch a woman. You come to church, you got a hand all on her leg. What's the message? What's the message? I just, I just, I just want you to know I love you. But then you love me, get your hands off me. Because that ain't going to lead to nothing good. Because the hang, the touch going to send a message up to the mind. And the mind going to say, ooh, that feels good. <laughs> I, I'm stuck on this. It's impossible. Come on, church. It's impossible. Now let me get off, let me get off the sex thing. Your bills are high. Your finances are low. You're tempted to do something illegal to make up the difference. Or you might be tempted to go and work 15 jobs. But while you're working all them jobs, your family's missing you. I'll never forget an old man 
I got, I, got, I got some more minutes left. Don't look at me. I remember an old man, we were playing chess. The game chess, man. And uh, while we were playing, he sat across from me with tears in his eyes. And he said, Kenny, he said, you're a young man. He said, I don't want you to make the same mistake I made. Amen. And he said, I worked two jobs, and I retired from both of them because I wanted to make sure my family had a lot of stuff. He said, but when I retired, my kids were now grown, and now I want to spend time with them, but they don't have no time for me. He said, all this time, I thought it was about the thing. But they just wanted me. Yes. Tears running down his face. I'll never forget that. I was only 20-something years old when we sat down. I'm 63 now. You know, it looks good, but, you know. Are, are y'all hearing what I'm saying? And to this day, I still remember what he told me. It's, it's, it's hard to beat this flesh. It's an unruly thing. You can't even control your tongue. How many times you say, you're not going to talk about nobody? <laughs> you ain't even got out their presence. You're talking about them already. <laughs> you don't got on the phone. Did you know? Da, 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 da? Huh? They say, well, oh, I didn't know. Well, don't tell nobody before you hung up. They had speed dial with one button. <laughs> Come on, somebody. Yeah. It's this flesh. Yeah. How many times you say you're going to read your Bible every day? If we, if we eat like we read the Bible, we wouldn't have to worry about no exercise programs. We'd be the thinnest people you think we from Biafra. Or Biafra, or whatever, everyone in the mafas. Huh? It's hard. It's flesh. Anybody going to identify with me, or you going to just look at me like you in a puzzle? It's hard. And when people coming off the street, they just getting saved, leave them alone. Because it's hard. Amen. Coming out of different backgrounds, messed up from the flow up. Yeah. And here you come with your delivered self. And trying to tell them what they need to do. Let them, let them take their time just like you did. Yeah. Yeah. They come in, they ain't dressed right, leave them alone. Yeah. You ain't got to tell them how to dress. Leave that to me. Because I know how to witness to folk. Amen. I had one of the, I know I'm deviating a little bit, but I had one of the greatest witnesses for Christ that ever lived. He's still living. He's in his, he got to be up in his late 80s now. Named Sam Copeland. Him and I used to work together. I wasn't living a nickel worth a dog, nothing. He was a man of God. And you know what he never did? He never condemned me. He just used to always say to me, Kenny, I'm praying for you, brother. You know, God is good. That's all he would say to me. And I would just watch his life. And when I got saved, guess where I ended up at? At his church. That lesson of learning how to just pray for people and understand they didn't come through the, the golden spoon you came through, you let God clean them up. But it's hard to deny this flesh, even though you say, you see them come down there and they skirt way up here. We'll give them a throat claw because I don't need to be looking at all that. But you don't be, you are not the kind of church looking like that. that. Now you don't never see them again. Because you didn't give them time to let God start dealing with their hearts. How are you going to tell a prostitute how to dress? And all she knows how to do is show all her stuff. But when she come in here, we're going to cover the stuff up. But we ain't going to kick her out and make her feel guilty. I'm talking about, I'm talking about promotion. Promotion. Let me hurry up. I got a few more. You got more, more time to put up with me? I know the organist's not here, because I feel like hollering. But, but look, 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 look at Paul, Acts chapter 9. 
verse 15. And to all of you that are at the door of promotion, look at some few people around you and say, do you really want to be promoted? It's going to cost you. It's going to cost you. Come on, tell me, it's going to cost you. Brother, you want to be promoted? It's going to cost you. You're going to have to make some changes. You're going to have to do some things different. Huh? Listen to what it says. Acts 9, 15. But the Lord said unto Ananias, Ananias, go thy way. For he is what? Don't you know you could be chosen and don't even know you were chosen? When my mother fell down on the ground having me downstairs, a man was upstairs falling on the floor dying. When he went out, I came in. Not knowing there was a call on my life. And never in church. I didn't come into church till I was 23 years old. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? You don't know what God got in your future that you have no clue about. But because you have grown, some of you, now, 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 let me just put it this way. Some of you grew up in church and got so accustomed to church but never have a relationship with God. So it's foreign still to your ears. But I tell you one thing, if you ever open up that Bible and just start reading it, you ain't going to keep reading that Bible and don't change. Something's going to happen. Because the very first time I had an encounter with God, I went in the basement and started reading that Bible, and my life changed. Why? Because I became the property of God. Look at your neighbor and say, are you the property of God yet? Look at what he says now. Look at what he said. He said he's a chosen vessel to bear my name before the Gentiles and to bear them before kings and to bear them before the children of Israel. Now look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Don't, don't, don't leave this part out. For I will show him how great things he must suffer. We're in New Testament. We're in grace and all that great stuff. But it don't exempt you from the fallen world we live in. So when things break your heart, don't throw away your promotion. When things don't go your way, don't throw away the gospel. When things get difficult, just no promotions at hand. Because if I can ever, if I can ever change your perception, I can change your life. A kitty cat looks in the mirror, but his reflection shows him a lion. You look in the mirror, what do you see? You still see a failure. You still see all your mistakes. You still see all your shortcomings. You ought to tell that devil he's a liar. Because any man being Christ, he's a new creation. Old things pass away. Behold, all things come new. But you got to be willing to go ahead and keep on walking. And you might cry, but keep on walking. You might be hurt, but keep on walking. You might be discouraged, but keep on walking. Folk might not agree, but keep on walking. Things might not go your way, but keep on walking. Because when you keep on walking, something great is going to happen for you. Give God a praise if you got one there. Keep on walking. Jeremiah 1, 5. I got 12 more minutes if you got patience. Look at this, 12 more minutes. Look at what it says. Jeremiah. Jeremiah, I want you to understand something. Look at somebody next to you and call their name out. If you don't know them, ask them. <laughs> ask them what their name is if you don't know them. Say whatever their name is and say before the Lord formed you in the belly. He knew you. He knew everything you would do. Huh? So before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest out of the womb, I sanctified thee. Huh? And I ordained you for the purpose of kingdom. Before you came out your mother's womb. Some of you got some bad background families. That's all right. They just was a vehicle God used to bring you into the world. Oh, I wish I could have prayed. Like, hey! Glory to God! It was just a vehicle God used. It wasn't all about your family. It was about you getting here. 
And now that you're here, God said, I done sanctified you. I'm going to now use you. And now you're going to be a mouthpiece for me. You ought to give God a praise up in here. Woo! Hey! Those whom he called, he ordained. He said, the great things you'll suffer. But I'll be right there with you. He was there all the time. Waiting patiently. In line. Good God, somebody. That boy preaching today. <laughs> I sure take a lot for granted. Now look at this. And I'm closing. The reason I'm not afraid of promotion. Why I find it in John 14.10. The reason why I'm not afraid. Come on, look at somebody and say, don't be afraid to be promoted. Why? Believest thou not that Jesus is in the Father and the Father is in him? He said, the words I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwells in me. Why? Because he doeth the work. Whew. Did you hear what I just told you? Don't be afraid, because the moment you say, Lord, here I am, he does the work. You might try to do the work, but your job is just to submit to the work and let God do the work. He said it won't be you speaking, but it'll be me speaking. Huh? It'll be your hands I use. It'll be your mouth I use. It'll be your life I use. I'm invisible, but visible in you. And where I direct you, you go. And I'm going to do the work for you if you stay humble enough to let me use you for my glory. Don't walk around talking about I got a healing ministry. You ain't got nothing. If God don't do it, it won't get done. Oh, I wish I could get a praise in the house. Tell your neighbor it's the Lord that's working in me. It's the Lord that has my... Of the, under the unction of the Holy Ghost. I'm not afraid. Why? Because Philippians 3 and 3 tells me, for we are the circumcision which worship God in spirit and we rejoice in Christ Jesus and we have no confidence. Now, you know, God twist that thing for me a little bit. He said, people, when they quote this, they always talk about other folk. I don't have confidence in my own flesh. Amen. Any man thinking of himself to stand, let him take heed lest he fall. Amen. I don't trust myself. Amen. Well, I got to ask God, keep helping me, Lord. Yes. Keep directing me, Lord. Yes. Keep me under your strength, God. Yes. When I look like I'm getting out of the way, please talk to me, God. Because you are in control of my life, Lord. Because I don't want to do anything to bring harm to your name. I don't want to bring shame to your game. Come on. I want to be everything he called me to be. I might not be what you want me to be, but I'm trying to be what God wants me to be. And if you praise God with me, we might both become what God called us both to be. Come on, somebody shout in here. The last thing, and I'm done. The reason why I'm not afraid of promotion. Are you ready for this? 2 Timothy 1.12. And the Bible says this. For the which cause I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I'm not ashamed. For I know whom I have believed. Look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor. See, when you believe in God, those little things you go through, not going to change your decision. For I know whom I believe and the persuaded that he is able to do what? Keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. What is that? Me. <laughs> I gave him me. Come on, do like I'm doing right here. Say, I gave him me. I gave him every day I give him me. Lord, I give you me today. 
because if you leave me to myself, no telling what I do. So God, as I get ready to start my day, I come to give you me. Take me, Lord. Keep me, Lord, until that day. Keep me in the morning. Keep me in the noonday. Keep me in those midnight hours. God, just keep me. Because if you don't keep me, there's nothing to keep me. So, God, I ask you to keep me. Will somebody ask God to keep them right now? Keep me. Keep me. And I shall be kept. Come on, give God a praise. Keep me, Lord. Keep me. Keep me. Keep me in the hour of temptation.